Bezos' Blue Origins to lift off space tourism. Tourism remains one of the key sectors that have been harshly affected by this pandemic. So is that why billionaires are investing on space tourism? The Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is expanding his reach to outer space. On May 6, 2021, Bezos' space company Blue Origin reveals that they are auctioning a seat in one of their suborbital vehicles, the New Shepard. This spacecraft is designed to pave the path for space tourism set to launch on July 20. With one lucky civilian, this vertical takeoff vertical landing VTVL and crew rated spacecraft is a reusable launch vehicle developed by Blue Origin. Named after the first American to go to space, Alan Shepard, this suborbital spacelift hopes to be the first to bring private civilians past the internationally recognized boundary of space, the Kármán line. Imagine that! To top it off, the whole space flight only takes approximately 11 minutes. That's less than me pooping in the bathroom while scrolling on social media. The new Shepard can guide a herd of six astronauts and it's fully autonomous, meaning there are no pilots, everyone is a passenger. The capsule itself is very spacious, pressurized, and environmentally controlled for comfort, not to mention every passenger gets a window seat. So whether you're an aisle person or a window person, it doesn't really matter because this capsule is ginormous. Bezos' space venture has been very productive for the past 9 years as they have been testing this craft and its redundant safety systems since 2012. In that span of time, they have had 15 successful consecutive missions, with 3 successful escape tests. Not only is it some nice shiny object flung to the sky, it has also helped in human-tended researches. The new Shepard's payload flights have supported various research education and developmental technology with a low cost. Arian Cornell, Blue Origin's Director of Astronaut and Orbital Sales, reiterated that the capsule has the largest windows that have ever flown in space and its design is actually based on a helicopter model. The experience is described as filling up to three times heavier than your normal weight for up to two minutes during the ascent and up to five and a half times your normal weight for a few seconds during the descent into the atmosphere with it being capped off by returning to Earth under parachutes. Since the successful announcement in 2018, Reuters news agency reported that Blue Origin planned to charge passengers at least $200,000 for a ride. This was roughly based on appraisals of rivals' plans from billionaire Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic Holdings Incorporated. Blue Origin discloses that as of May 19th, the highest bid for that seat stands at $2.4 million in the second round of the auction that was kicked off with a bid of $1.4 million. This after receiving 5,200 bidders from 136 countries all over the world and that's for the first round only. The whole thing will last until June 10 with the winner being announced during a live online auction on June 12. The first civilian passenger will take off from the Italy remote Van Horn, Texas. The other personnel joining this space adventure will be handpicked by Blue Origin themselves, which is still undisclosed as of the moment. Cornell says, and I quote, the winner of this auction, he or she will write him or herself into the history books, and on top of that, they're opening the doors for other space explorers to pass through behind them. As far as I'm concerned, it's a pretty priceless experience. But not only will you be the very first civilian to tour and sightsee in space, the winning bid amount will also be donated to Blue Origins Foundation's Club for the Future. This club is dedicated to inspiring future generations to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Although the bidding is totally open for everyone just like the Goblet of Fire in Harry Potter, there may be physical needs that are suitable to a certain age. Individuals must be at least 18 years old or the age of the majority in their country of residence. Height-wise, they must be between 5 feet and 6 foot, 4 inches tall and weigh between 110 and 223 pounds. In addition to that, the individual must be able to climb 7 flights of stairs, which is the height of the launch tower, in under 90 seconds, be able to fasten or unfasten a seat harness in under 15 seconds, and hear and understand instructions in English but Blue Origin will not evaluate the astronauts' medical fitness for their participation in the flight. 
To become the first civilian to graze outer space, you must work hard and train for it in Blue Origins facilities in Kent, Washington, and Cluberson County, Texas, or some other location. Of course, for the benefit of both parties, the winner must sign a non-disclosure agreement and waivers of claims, bearing that they may waive their right to bring claims against anyone involved in the flight for any losses. I'd like to give a round of applause for Mr. Bezos for really turning the tables on this one, because last April, he wasn't too happy with losing to one of his biggest rivals, SpaceX by Elon Musk. Bezos challenged a $2.9 billion contract to SpaceX from NASA to building a lander in the moon. He reportedly filed a 50-page protest with the Federal Government Accountability Office. In the competition, SpaceX beat out Blue Origin and Dynetics of Huntsville, Alabama, who also filed a protest. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration has stated that they can no longer provide further comments on the matter due to a pending litigation. Bob Smith, the chief executive of Blue Origin, voiced that NASA's decision was flawed and misjudged Blue Origin's proposal entirely, downplaying technical challenges in SpaceX's, with NASA placing more emphasis on the cost than it said it would. Smith said, and I quote, It's really atypical for NASA to make these kinds of errors. They're generally quite good at acquisition, especially its flagship missions like returning America to the surface of the moon. We felt that these errors needed to be addressed and remedied. The highly coveted rivalry doesn't just end there because Blue Origin isn't the only company offering a ticket to space. As of 2021, SpaceX currently has two tourist launches marked in their calendars. One of them is scheduled for as early as September 2021 and is funded by the American billionaire businessman and pilot Jared Isaacman. Axiom Space is also organizing a trip for space, but this is set for 2022. If you can't break through the space-time continuum, just make your way to space. But it'll probably cost you $55 million, inclusive of a flight and accommodation at the International Space Station. Not to mention the Virgin Galactic is also testing Spaceship 2, regardless of the lack of a specific timetable, with prices ranging from $200,000 to $250,000. By the time space tourism is afloat, first-class airfares might turn out cheap in contrast. Although these prices are super expensive, it is worth mentioning that Dennis Tito's ticket to Spaceway back 2001 was over $20 million just goes to show that men with money will really go to lengths. These billionaires have yet to gain back their billion dollar investments in space adventure, but they certainly plan on doing so very soon. Take British billionaire businessman Richard Branson's case for example. He has acquired Spaceship One a company that made the first reusable spaceship and won the Ansari X Prize, and proceeded to establish the Virgin Galactic due to not just having an overflow of money, but also to having an adventurous side. Now, he is working on improving Spaceship One to design, build, and fly a Spaceship Two that it can carry up to six passengers in a suborbital flight, like the new Shepard. He has yet to bask in his victory, but it does seem like Musk and Bezos have much more luck because SpaceX was able to have a little taste of success with its Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft, but they too have yet to grasp their ultimate goal, which is human settlement on Mars. Well, that's a long way to go right there, but Musk says that sending paying customers to space is already an intermediate step. Circling back to Bezos and his success, the Amazon founder and chief executive officer was initially inspired by the vision of physicist Gerard O'Neill. This guy wants to expand humanity and an industry not just to Mars, but to space itself. For Bezos, these launches are representative of the tantamount effort of making space tourism shine through to further space exploration, travel, and hopefully humanity as well. Sounds like these guys haven't watched the 2013 sci-fi film Gravity because that was definitely some sort of eye-opener, but kudos to the brilliant minds working to make all this a reality. The Jetsons might have been a premonition of some sort, who knows? For now, that's all we have.